Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach who has lost and maintained a 140 pound weight loss. Today is a video that I have spent a lot of time putting together to film and this is the number one video request I get from you and that is how I healed my relationship with food. In order for me to lose and maintain a 140 pound weight loss, I had to really focus on healing my relationship with food so I could keep that weight loss off long term. I'm going to share with you eight things that I specifically did to heal my relationship with food while losing weight. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not, turn your bell on because I upload five videos every single week and I do a lot and I share a lot about my weight loss journey and what I did to lose and maintain that weight loss. Down in the description box, I will link nutrition coaching. Highly recommend those customized macros and calories. That's what I follow to lose my weight, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching for questions, accountability, or to talk with me directly. Links, discounts to my favorite things, and come join our Facebook group. It's free, it's supportive. We would love to have you. Oh, and I'll have my health and nutrition planner down below for you. I just created this to help you navigate a health and weight loss journey. So it is under $20, it's fully customizable, it's perpetual, so you can use it year after year, and all of the proceeds go to support Lola, my little girl right there, and her continued chemotherapy treatments for lymphoma, lymphoma cancer. So thank you in advance for your support and thank you to everybody who said they love the planner. I love it equally as much. I've been using it every day since I created it. So without further ado, let's talk about how I healed my relationship with food. have been overweight most of my life. I've had periods where I've lost quite a bit of weight and kept that weight off for a period of time, but I always have gained the weight back and oftentimes more than I lost initially. I was made fun of in elementary school, middle school, and high school for being overweight. I've always been self-conscious of my body. I've always had a terrible relationship with food. I've never been diagnosed with binge eating disorder, but I 100% would binge on food. I love sweets. I've been a sweets eater my entire life, and I could easily devour an entire pack of cookies every single day and not think twice about it. I've struggled with my weight, I've struggled with my relationship with food literally my entire life. And when I set out to lose my weight for the last time at the beginning of 2022, I decided to focus on being in a calorie deficit, eating enough protein and fiber every day. And in the year of 2022, not only did I lose 90 pounds, but I made drastic strides in my relationship with food. I went from a very unhealthy relationship to an overall healthy relationship with food that has continued while I've maintained my weight loss now for about a year and a half. So I wanna share with you exactly what I did during my weight loss, since my weight loss in maintenance, to heal my relationship with food forever and to never go back to that unhealthy relationship. The number one thing that I did and really the most important thing for healing that relationship with food was I no longer restricted any food or any food group. I never restricted carbohydrates, I never restricted fat, I never restricted any food. I told myself that I was able to eat all foods but I had to be mindful of portion size. And I knew that I would get more broccoli in a portion than I would potato chips. It didn't mean I couldn't eat the potato chips, I would just get less of them. I wanted to focus on eating the foods that I enjoyed and not restricting any food or food group because I knew that that wasn't sustainable for me. And the number one cause of binge eating is restriction. When we tell ourselves that we can't have something, we want it even more. And it's harder for us, and it's much harder for us to stay away from the foods that we're trying to restrict. Strict. And along with telling myself that I was no longer going to restrict foods was not eliminating any food or food group. So not only did I not restrict myself from the foods that I chose, I refused to eliminate anything. I refused to say that I couldn't have dessert every day. I refused to say that I could never have a donut again. I refused to say that I could never eat potato chips again. I refused to say that I couldn't have pizza again. I didn't want to eliminate anything. Again, I wanted to be mindful of the portion sizes, but I truly wanted to eat the foods that I enjoyed. I didn't want to suck down food that I absolutely hated for the sake of trying to lose weight. I didn't want to restrict anything. I didn't want to eliminate anything. I wanted to eat everything that I enjoyed. I knew that I wouldn't get as much of the less healthy food that I would of the healthy food, but I still wanted to be able to eat the less healthy food because by telling myself that I had to restrict or eliminate any foods or food groups, that's not sustainable for me. And again, I knew that if I that I couldn't have a donut, that when I got my hands on a donut, I wouldn't eat just one. I would eat two, three, four, five, six, 
or even a dozen. And that was the part of food, my disordered relationship with food that I really wanted to focus on healing. Number three, I stopped putting a moral value on food. I stopped calling food bad or good. I never call food bad or good anymore. Food is just food. Food is fuel. Now, are there healthier foods than others? Absolutely. Can you eat the unhealthier food? Absolutely. If you follow me, you know that I am very, very big on the 80-20 rule. 80% whole, real, healthy foods, foods that fuel our body, foods that give us vitamins, minerals, and nutrients, and then 20% fun food, food that we enjoy that maybe falls on the less healthy food list. Like I mentioned, I'm a sweets eater. It is not sustainable for me not to have sweets in my diet. In fact, I eat dessert every single night. Sometimes I have dessert twice in a day. I have done that through my entire weight loss journey. That is the 20%, the fun food. And then the rest of the foods that I consume, I make sure I'm getting in my protein every day. I'm eating enough fiber. I'm eating healthy carbohydrates and healthy fat. And then 20% of my diet is going to be foods that I enjoy. Foods that fall on that less healthy list. Again, not restricting or eliminating any food or food group and not putting a moral value on food. You're not bad because you ate pizza and I'm not good because I had salad. There is zero moral value on food. Food is just food. And as soon as you take the moral value out, I promise you that will make you take drastic strides in improving your relationship with food overall. I wanna tell you one of the things that I really used to do that encompasses the no restriction approach, the no elimination approach, and the no moral value on food approach. Because I love sweets, and while I was doing all of these things, restricting, eliminating, and putting more value on food, I would buy, for example, a pack of cookies at the grocery store. Let's say I bought a pack of Oreos. And I would say, okay, I can have two Oreos every day. That's 140 calories. It's this many WW points. And then what would happen is I would eat my two Oreos that I told myself that I was allowed to have in the day. And then I would eat one more and then maybe another one. And then at that point I would go, well, forget it. I'm just gonna eat the entire pack of Oreos, get them out of my house so I won't eat them tomorrow. That was a really unhealthy relationship with food pattern that I got into. But what was happening is I would eat the whole pack of Oreos that day and go, Phew, they're out of my house. Well, guess what? There's other things in my house. And then the next day I would go through that same talk with myself. Well, you can only have two. And then I would eat more than two and I would throw in the towel and I would eat all of it. And I did that over and over and over again. And that made my relationship with food even more disordered, not to mention it continue, made my weight continue to climb. At my highest weight, I was 325 pounds and I would continue to buy that pack of Oreos and continue to tell myself that I was going to only eat two and that I would stop it too and then I would eat the whole package. And this is because I restricted, eliminated, and put a moral value on food. And it, I'm telling you, as soon as you stop doing those three things, your life and your relationship with food is going to change. And now guess what? Today, I can have a pack of Oreos in my house. I can eat one or two, put the Oreos away, and they'll last me weeks and weeks and weeks. And to be honest with you, for the first time in my life, I've actually thrown away Oreos. You know when the package is open for a while, they're not crispy anymore, they get kind of soft. I've had to throw away cookies. Who am I to throw away cookies? That is an indication to me that I have really worked on my relationship with food. Number four, I stopped pretending I didn't have a problem. I 100% had a problem. I still have a problem. I still am addicted to food. And it's a battle that I have every single day. But because I no longer restrict, eliminate, or put a moral value on food, I no longer tell myself that I don't have a problem or an addiction to food, it's made that a lot more manageable. I come to terms with the fact that I have a disordered relationship with food, that I have an addiction to food, that there's a high likelihood that I even suffered from or could still suffer from binge eating disorder. I have had a heart to heart with myself and I stopped saying I didn't have a problem and I recognize that I absolutely have a problem. And when we figure out that there's something in our life that we need to work on, we start thinking about the steps that we need to take to resolve that. And that's exactly what I did. I stopped saying I didn't have a problem and I started focusing on solving that problem. And that's what led to one through three, to stop restricting, eliminating, and putting a moral value on food and recognizing that I do have an issue with food and learning how to navigate that issue and correcting it for the future. And that leads me to number five, and this is a huge one. I stopped being preoccupied with food. I stopped thinking about food all the time. The food noise drastically decreased. Now, a couple of years ago, gosh, I think it's been a couple of years, I'll find the video and link it for you. I put out a video, it's a really popular one on my channel, of all of the mistakes that I made on Weight Watchers. And one of those mistakes was 
eating on a schedule and always thinking about food. For my entire life, I've been preoccupied about with food. From the minute I wake up to the minute I go to sleep, I'm always thinking about food. I'm always planning my next meal. I'm always figuring out what I can eat to fit it into my day. I would eat a meal and not be satisfied. I'd be full, I wouldn't be hungry anymore, but I wouldn't be satisfied because I wasn't eating the food that I wanted. I was eating the foods that were low in calorie, low in fat, low in points. And all I would think about from the minute I stopped eating to the next snack or meal, was what I was going to eat. Food was always on my brain. The food noise was always, always there. I don't think about food until I'm actually hungry. Now, I do plan my meals. I do make sure that I eat enough protein every day. So there is a part of me that is planning my food and my meals throughout the day. But once I've eaten a meal, now today, I don't think about food until I'm physically hungry again. I'm in The reason for that and the one thing that I did differently is I started eating the foods that I enjoyed. Even though I was trying to lose weight, I started eating foods that I really, really liked and foods that made me satisfied after I ate them. And as soon as I did that, I stopped thinking about food all the time. I stopped thinking about all the food I couldn't have, all the food I was restricting, all the food I was eliminating. And I ate the foods that I enjoyed. I ate a portion of them. I ate until I was satisfied. And then, like I said, when I would think about food the next time was when I started to be hungry again. And with this, I stopped eating on a schedule. I stopped eating breakfast at eight, lunch at 12, snack at two. I now listen to my body and my internal hunger cues. And when I'm actually hungry, that's when I eat. Maybe it's an hour later, maybe it's four hours later, but when I am hungry, that is when I eat. I really wanted to focus on listening to my internal hunger cues because my end goal is to intuitively eat, to not have to track my food forever. I want to just eat when I'm hungry, stop when I'm satisfied. That is the end goal for me. And in order to do that, I have to stop thinking about food all the time. I have to stop being preoccupied with food and I have to start listening to my internal hunger cues, not head hunger cues, internal hunger cues. And that leads me to the next one. And that is I stopped eating based on rules rather than actual hunger. I stopped eating on a schedule. That was a big mistake I made when I followed Weight Watchers is I would eat at the same time every single day. Now there's nothing wrong with that, but I was finding that I was eating even when I wasn't hungry. And now today I don't do that. If I'm hungry, I eat. And I will tell you full transparency, full honesty. You can ask my husband. There has been times that I have went to bed and gotten up to get a snack because I'm actually hungry. Maybe it's a cheese stick, maybe it's a piece of fruit, maybe it's some crackers, but I have gotten gotten up out of bed when I went to bed because I'm hungry. It is that important for me to stop eating on a schedule, to stop following any rules relating to food because there are no rules around food. There's no good or bad foods. There's no rules around food. And I really started focusing on when I was actually hungry and fueling my body with the foods that would make me feel satisfied. The foods that I knew nourished my body, the foods that I enjoyed, the foods that tasted good. And instead of eating based on rules or time schedules, I started eating based on hunger and that absolutely changed the game for me. I also stopped using food to deal with emotion, to cope with life, to cope with stress, to cope with sadness, to cope with anxiety and boredom. I stopped using food. This was another big, big change that I made that drastically improved my relationship with food overall. I'm not really an emotional eater. I don't eat when I'm stressed, sad, or mad. In fact, I typically have less of an appetite when I'm stressed, sad, mad, or anxious. I am a board eater and I find that the worst time for me is in the evening. So after dinner, when I'm relaxing, watching TV, winding down for the night, I think, and I want to say think, head hunger, I think I'm hungry and I want to snack. What I've done to really combat that boredom eating, especially in the evening, is I have allowed myself to have an after dinner snack, whatever that looks like. Sometimes it's dessert, sometimes it's some cheese, sometimes it's a yogurt, sometimes it's a protein shake, whatever sounds good to me. Again, I don't follow any food rules, I don't eliminate or restrict anything, so whatever sounds good, as long as it fits into my day, I save that I allow myself to set those calories and macros aside so that I can have that after dinner snack. And that has really, really helped me to stop eating based on emotion. And that emotion for me is boredom. There are some easy, easy things that you can do when you're feeling like you're eating simply based on head hunger, not actual internal hunger. Find something else to do. Get up and walk around your house. Go get the mail. Take a walk. If it's after dinner and you just think you need to eat something, go take a walk. The act of doing something else will take your mind off of the food. Now, if you're actually hungry, eat. Eat something. If your body is telling you that it needs nutrition, then you need to be fueling your body with nutrition. But if it's all up here, if it's because you're sad, stressed, anxiety, you have anxiety, you're bored, 
find something else to do. Now, this may seem counterproductive, but this is what works for me. And we're all different, so this may not work for you, but I find if I scroll on my phone, it takes my mind off of the hunger. So for me, that's watching TikTok because it's short form content, so I'm constantly scrolling. Or maybe I'm watching reels on Instagram. If I'm watching a YouTube video or TV, that's more longer form content, and that's when my mind starts to wander towards food. And when that happens, I switch over to something that I actually have to physically scroll because the act of moving my fingers and focusing on that short form content takes my mind off of food. And honestly, this really works for me. So you have to find what works for you, but stop using food to deal with emotions because all it does is give you instant gratification and an and while you're eating, it takes your mind off of the emotion, but then you go right back to feeling those emotions and sometimes even other emotions. And one of those main other emotions that you'll get from eating based solely on emotion is guilt. And that is the last thing that I did to stop healing my relationship with food. And that is to stop feeling guilty, to stop beating myself up when I go off plan or eat something I'm not supposed to. I stopped having guilt around food because remember, food has no moral value. It's not bad, it's not good. You're not good because you ate healthy, I'm not bad because I ate unhealthy. There is zero moral value on food, so there is zero reason to feel guilty about the foods that you're eating. And when we feel guilty, when we beat ourselves up for eating certain foods, it makes us feel bad about ourselves. And oftentimes, that is an emotion that can lead to eating more food that sabotages our weight loss and health goals. So stop feeling guilty. There's no moral value on food. If you eat something off plan, if you eat a little less healthy food, that's okay. And instead of feeling guilty when these life situations happen, move on from them. The next meal or snack, get back on track. The next day, get back on track. Stop beating yourself up and feeling guilty because all that's going to do is further consuming those unhealthy foods and eating based on emotion, not actual hunger. Like I said, our ultimate goal is to intuitively eat. When we were children, we intuitively ate. People who don't have unhealthy relationship with food, people who don't have a weight issue, they intuitively eat. My husband is an intuitive eater. He eats when he's hungry, he stops when he's satisfied. He very, very rarely finishes a meal. He doesn't binge on food. He doesn't eat an entire bag of chips in a day. He eats a small amount of chips. And when he's satisfied, he stops eating. That's what we ultimately want to get back to. And by feeling guilty when we're eating food, that's not going to get us to a place where we're able to intuitively eat down the road. So these are the things that I did to heal my relationship with food. And I'm telling you, it is a work in progress. I still work on my relationship with food to this day. I still am mindful of these things. I still have to stop myself sometimes when I'm wanting to restrict or call a food bad or good or beat myself up because I overate. I have to really focus on these things day to day, hour to hour, minute to minute. But I promise you, if you do these things, you're going to gradually heal your, your relationship with food and it's going to be easier to keep that relationship healthy. And what that means for you in the long term is keeping the weight off, being able to enjoy your life, being able to go to social events, being able to have foods in your house that you don't overeat, and really truly live the way that we're intended to live. And being able to eat the foods that we enjoy, watching our portions, and just feeling really good about our overall health and weight loss journey. Healing your relationship with food will come naturally as you lose weight if what you're doing to lose weight, to lose fat, is healthy and is sustainable long term. That was counting calories and macros. That is something that I was able I was able to lose all of my weight and maintain my weight loss. And to this day, I don't feel like I'm on a diet. This is just, like I said, my lifestyle now. And I'm moving closer and closer to intuitive eating, which is the end result goal. We want to go back to our roots, to our childhood roots and eat when we're hungry and stop when we're satisfied. There's a great book out there, an intuitive eating book, and there's actually an intuitive eating workbook. I'll link them down below for you. And as part of my nutrition and health planner, I have quite a few really good book recommendations and a way for you to track habits and to start learning on how to heal your relationship with food is all part of my health and nutrition planner. So I'll link that down below for you. And if you want to talk with me, if you want one-on-one -on -one support, I am here with nutrition coaching and please have your macros and calories done. So you know exactly what you should be eating, what you can focus on to lose the weight and keep it off, but also work on that relationship with food. So I hope this video was helpful for you. I know so many people have been dying for me to put out this video, but I really wanted to think long and hard about what did I actually 
actually do to heal my relationship with food? What am I continuing to do every single day? And these eight things are the, are exactly what I did step by step. So I really, really hope that this helps you. Let me know down below which one of these you really want to focus on and you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. I promise you, you can not only lose the weight and keep it off, but you can have a healthy relationship with food. I promise. I promise you can do it. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.